Welcome to the Bridgewater Now Update. I'm John Luck coming to you from outside of our BTV studios here on Spring Street where the chill is on. But we do want to tell you about some of the Veterans Day ceremonies and tributes that took place. And for that, we're going to start on Friday morning. That's where students at the high school pay tribute to the veterans. Some of them were in attendance. And those students thank the veterans for what they do and what they've done to protect our freedoms. We're here today to honor you, our heroes, to remember your achievements, your courage, your dedication, and to say thank you for your sacrifices. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have nobly served. Thank you for answering the call to duty. You have made our armed forces the most respected in the world. I'd also like to acknowledge the family members of any service member. We know you have lived through difficult times and have often taken a heavy load to keep your homes and families running smoothly. Thank you for all that you have sacrificed in supporting our troops. And after the forum, the students and the veterans went into the different classrooms where the students could ask the veterans some questions about their service and even heard some stories as well. You can watch the full presentation from the high school on our website on demand at btvaccess.com. A couple of days later was the annual Tri-Town Veterans Day Parade, which was held this year in West Bridgewater. Uh, potentially the best weather day for November, residents from Bridgewater and East and West Bridgewater came out for the day. Elected officials were on hand as well, and the general theme to those in attendance was we shouldn't just thank veterans for their duty on Veterans Day, but every day. Days like this really remind me how special a community we do have. When we take pause and we come out as a community, to say thank you to the brave men and women in our armed forces, those who don the uniform so that we can live the lives we lead. We gather together today as we do each year in recognition of our regional fine men and women who have answered the call of duty and fought so proudly for our nation. With our hearts filled with gratitude and eyes filled with tears, we thank you brave men and women who sacrificed so much so we could have a better life and a country to call home. Today on Veterans Day. We all get together and we try to say thank you to all our veterans and appreciate those that are serving today, those that have served in the past, and that those that will serve in the future. Because many of us here today have family members that have served in the past, that are currently serving today, and have children that will serve in the future. We thank the families, the spouses, the children, the mother, fathers, aunts and uncles, and friends who did a tremendous job supporting their veterans while they were there and continue to do so here. Every day, every day should be Veterans Day. We should not just be thanking them today. Every time you see and know a veteran, please go up and say thank you. And most of the time they're going to answer, it was an honor to serve this country. Over at the police station, a $3,000 check was presented to Massachusetts Vesta Dog and Molly Vesta Dog. Molly and her mom were on hand for the presentation along with Bridgewater Police Chief Chris Del Monte and BPD 5K organizer Rebecca Kaler. You may remember this year's BPD 5K and One Mile Fun Run raised funds for the Vesta Dog program and the check for $3,000 will buy some protective gear for police canines. The um, standard um, vest cost about $1,500. A SWAT vest goes for about $2,600. And the SWAT vest, what we can do with that is you can attach it to um, the officer, and they, or you know, if they need to go somewhere, they can hoist the dog down. Um, they can put a camera, GPS, and you know, those all different things that you can do with the SWAT vest, which is really nice. Um, and then we can also purchase um, kennel inserts like we did for um, Bridgewater. I know that um, you guys have one of the kennel inserts in the back. And you Stacy and Molly obviously been working on this. This seems to have blossomed far beyond probably what they ever thought it would be. But they've been doing it for a number of years, and so we're very grateful on uh, the law enforcement community, particularly those of us that have canines, um, for the work that they have done. I know Molly as a young lady and Stacy helping her out as her mom have done a lot of work to raise funds and so these are essential funds they they go directly to the programs and our canine is an important part of law enforcement it's a big part people don't get to see as much of it they don't get to see the actual work taking place mm -hmm. usually um, and so it's really an important tool that we have in law enforcement and so oftentimes we don't get a, enough funding to be able to support the canine not only the canine handler but the canine themselves um, for protective equipment and tools that, uh, that help us in the long run. 
The Czech presentation, as it has for the past couple of years, has also served as an opportunity to announce the next beneficiary for the 5K and Fun Run. And the 2020 beneficiary will be Project PAC. Uh, Project PAC is a nonprofit um, started about 2006. We supply post assault comfort kits, that's what the PAC stands for, to sexual assault survivors at hospitals across Massachusetts. We also have a pediatric program. And those um, packs are assembled and given to the Children's Advocacy Centers across the state. Every uh, local county in the state has a Children's Advocacy Center. You know, we're very fortunate. You know, oftentimes we come across people in the worst times of their lives. And so, you know, we have certain, uh, I call them business things that we have to do uh, as part of that investigation and prosecution ultimately. And sometimes those things are very difficult for victims to, to have to go through. They're necessary but uh, nonetheless they're very difficult and so uh, it's good for us to be able to support a program that kind of helps in uh, small ways mm -hmm. I think as Tammy has described uh, for people who are going through probably the worst time of their life. I would like to add that we are hosting a women's self-defense class the first class was last night November 10th we are having a second class on Sunday November 17th and it's at the Senior Center from 6 to 9 p.m. and all the money raised from that is also going to Project PAC it's you can you can come to the second class even though you didn't come to the first one because we'll review and teach you some new skills and something is better than nothing um, so if you're interested in that you can reach out to us through our website or on Facebook for more information on project pack next year's beneficiary for the BPD 5k you can visit their website projectpack.org it'll have the full check presentation and announcement of next year's beneficiary project pack coming up on our social media pages later on this week it feels like right now we should have Olaf out here with me. That's a nice little transition to this next story I'm talking about. As the Rainwater players will be putting on three presentations of Disney's Frozen. The three shows will be taking place on November 23rd and 24th. General admission seating tickets are $10 each, but on Sunday a special VIP package will be offered for $25. That includes a reserved seat and cookies and cocoa with some of the characters from 12.30 to 1.30. For more information on to buy your tickets, visit the website on the bottom of your screen. Thank you for watching this Bridgewater Now update from outside of our BTV studios here near Town River Landing. I'm John Locke.